Good morning, I'm Chris Roof, the lead pastor at Peace Tree. Thank you so much for welcoming us into your homes this morning. Well, last night was All Hallows Evening, or as we call it, Halloween. And as always, the day following Halloween is All Saints Day. Today is a day for us to remember all the saints who have made an impact in our lives. These are friends and coaches, co-workers, and neighbors, and especially family members, all who have preceded us into the kingdom eternal, all who have joined the church triumphant. So later today, after the message, we are going to be gathering at the table for Holy Communion. Many of you picked up these communion packets from our church building earlier this week, but in case you don't have a packet, you can simply gather bread or crackers along with water wine or juice and i will bless those elements later today as we celebrate the sacrament together but for right now let's join our voices together with our first song
Thanks again for joining us online. We believe that church can happen anywhere. And if you're new to Peace Tree, then I hope that you'll connect with us this week by sending us an email or a Facebook message, or you can visit peacetree.church slash connect and fill out our online connect card. From there, you can also subscribe for our newsletter, share a prayer request, or ask a question about any of the ministries that we have happening at Peace Tree. And right now, I hope that everybody will check into Peace Tree on Facebook and that you'll tag us in your Instagram stories. Thanks to our ongoing partnership with Causely, we're able to support the work of a different nonprofit organization each month through the simple act of checking in on Facebook. And thanks to your check-ins from last month, we were able to meet our goal and reach our goal of providing 17 days of care to a child in need through the organization Compassion International. Since it is a new month today, we have a new partner. And here to tell us more about our partner organization is Matt from Feed One. Hi everyone, this is Matt Wilkie coming to you from Feed One, a program of Convoy of Hope. This month, we are so happy to partner with all of you to help provide nutritious meals to children in need. Feed One is a campaign that supports Convoy of Hope's children's feeding program. Currently feeding more than 200,000 children in 14 countries, Feed One believes a nutritious meal shares hope opening the door for a child to be healthy and well-nourished. Every two check-ins this month will feed a child in need. So remember to check in this month and invest in the future of children around the world. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. You can learn more about this month's partner organization by visiting feedone.com. And remember to use the hashtag GiveMeals so that others know about this month's cause. Veterans Day is coming up and many of the community events that would normally be held on the 11th have been canceled this year due to COVID. But we wanna take a moment to thank our veterans for their service. And so we're gonna be hosting an outdoor veterans prayer service next Sunday on November the 8th. Veterans and active duty service members and their families are invited to join us for a short service on November the 8th and in case of rain, we will be having that service on November the 15th. For more information, please contact Liz Fernwalt at 901-299-9175. Our book club is meeting online on Tuesday, November the 10th to discuss The World That We Knew by Alice Hoffman. This month's novel has been described by the New York Times as a hymn to the power of resistance, perseverance, and enduring love in dark times. If you'd like to sit in on our discussion panel, then be sure to message us or comment on our posts in the Peace Tree Book Club Facebook group. Everyone will be able to watch and comment in the chat during our Facebook live stream, and it's all happening on November the 10th at 7.30 p.m. Central Time. Thanks again for joining us on this All Saints Sunday. Gather your communion elements for the Lord's Supper later in the service, and be sure to say hello to your friends in the chat. If you can, go ahead and give this video a like or a love. Now, let's continue worshiping God together with our next song. God sent His Son, they call Him Jesus, He came to love, heal and forgive, He lived and died. Oh 
Friends, we are just 25 days away from Thanksgiving, and there are multiple ways that you can help our neighbors. We've recently taken food donations to the Capelville Community Food Pantry. We've also taken toiletry items and paper products to Golden Cross Senior Ministries. You can always drop off these types of items, food donations, uh, toiletry items, uh, paper products, along with unused uh, eyeglasses and, uh, and, and even a monetary donation by the church office and that office is open from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Monday to Friday. We've also restocked our mana bags and so you could pick up a mana bag and keep it in your car. It's really helpful to have on hand and to uh, be able to give it to somebody that you see in need. If you'd like to donate your time and your energy to any of our ministries and you haven't already filled out our all you can uh, commitment form, it's online at peacetree.church slash all you can. There's a section that lets us know which areas you want to volunteer with, the areas and the issues that you're interested in. So again, that's at peacetree.church slash all you can. But maybe today you just want to make a one-time gift to support our ministries, you can do so using the form at peacetree.church slash give. And last week, we heard about Uplift, which is our church's building renovations campaign. If you're ready to walk a second mile with the people of Peace Tree as we retransform and repurpose our church, making it an even safer space uh, that can be used by our entire community, then visit peacetree.church slash uplift and there you'll find three simple steps that we're asking friends of our church as well as our church members to take and you can watch a video from our lay leader johnny jackson as always friends if you prefer to make a gift to our church by check then please mail in your offering and your tithes to 9315 east shelby drive in Cardiff, tennessee that's 38017 we thank you so much for your pledges for walking a second mile with us during our Uplift campaign, for the support that you've shown us during this season. Now, let's join our voices together with our next song.
Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. We need your presence, your kingdom come, your will be done here as in Families, gather your children around the screen for our kids' time from Mrs. Connie. We hope that everybody had a fun and safe Halloween night last night. And now let's enjoy this children's moment from Mrs. Connie. Good morning. I'm Connie Jackson, the children's director of Pastry. Thanks for joining me today for children's time. Good morning, Pastry Kids. How many of you have ever heard of jokes called knock knock jokes? I think probably most of you have. Most everyone likes knock-knock jokes. I have a few to tell you today. Knock-knock. Who's there? Ben. Ben who? Been knocking for 10 minutes. Please let me in. Knock-knock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Doris. Doris who? Doris Locke. That's why I'm knocking. Knock-knock. <laughs> Who's there? A door. A door who? A door is between us. Please open up. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in. It's cold out here. <laughs> well, I guess you might be wondering why I'm telling knock, knock jokes. It's because our lesson today talks about knocking at a door. In our Bible, it tells us in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, that Jesus was traveling through towns and villages teaching, and someone asked him, Lord, are only a few people going to be saved? Jesus then tells those listening about people who will be knocking at the door, but it will be too late. Do you know what door it is that Jesus was talking about? It's the door to heaven. I think everyone listening today wants to go to heaven, but did you know that there is only one door to heaven? And Jesus says that that door is very narrow. In Luke, 13 verses 24 through 25, Jesus said, Try very hard to enter through the narrow door. I tell you, many will try to enter and will not be able to. The owner of the house will get up and close the door. Then you will stand outside knocking and begging. You will say, Sir, open the door for us. But he will answer, I don't know you, and I don't know where you come from. Does that sound harsh to you? Where is that narrow door that we must find? How do we enter into that door to heaven? You may have heard a story that Jesus once told about the Good Shepherd. In the Gospel of John, chapter 10, we find a parable called the Good Shepherd and the Flock. In verse nine, it tells us that Jesus said, I'm like a gate. Anyone who enters through me will be saved. Mrs. Connie wants all of you listening to know that there is only one door to enter into heaven and salvation, and that door is Jesus. Do you know who can enter that door? Anyone who puts your faith and trust in Jesus and believes in him with all their heart won't be left standing outside knocking and crying, let me in. The door will be open to them, to all those who believe. Today is a special day. 
All Saints Day. At Peachtree, we're honoring all the people or saints who are members or special friends of Peachtree who have died this past year. Today, we celebrate their lives knowing that they knocked and entered heaven through the door called Jesus. Here's one more knock-knock joke for you. Knock-knock. Who's there? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you glad to know that Jesus is the door to heaven? Mrs. Connie is. Let us pray. Dear God, we are thankful that you loved us so much that you sent Jesus, your only son, to be the door through which we can enter into heaven. Amen. Today, I'd like to ask all the Peace Tree kids and families and all those watching to say a special prayer, giving God thanks for the lives and deaths of his saints that have passed away this past year. Their lives and witness continue, even though they're no longer in our presence, but are now in heaven. May God bless you and keep you safe. See you next week. Parents, connect with us by email and search for Peace Tree Families on Facebook and request to join that group. As the school year continues and as we see the start of flu season begin, we want to be sure uh, that we're doing everything we can to support y'all. And we hope that you are staying safe and remaining healthy. Last week, we closed out our Laity Month series through the storm. And in case you missed any of those uh, worship services, you can catch the replays on Facebook and on YouTube and from our church website. But next week, we're going to be starting a new sermon series called Spiritual. Have you ever heard uh, someone make the remark, I'm not very religious, but I am spiritual? Well, what do you think they mean by that? What does it mean to be spiritual? So over the next three weeks, we're going to be taking a look at three lesser known spiritual practices, ones that have less to do with, say, organized religion and more to do with your connection with God and your connection with the faith community. So I hope that you'll be back with us next week for week one of our newest series, Spiritual. Now, will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you so much for this All Saints Day, a chance to gather with our friends online and a chance to remember our loved ones. As we prepare to hear this word, uh, may we also prepare our hearts and minds for your table as we join together uh, at Holy Communion and, and celebrate the saints who have had an impact in our lives. Bless our time now, and, and may the words that I preach not be my own, but yours. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, and I invite you to hear these words. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we give thanks to God. Friends, as I mentioned, today is All Saints Day, and we're taking a look at this passage from Revelation, which includes saints in God's kingdom. You see, John has this vision, a vision of a huge crowd of people from every nation and every tribe speaking every language, 
on earth. And then one of the elders who's there asks him, well, who are these people? But then that elder goes on to answer his own question and says, these are coming from the time of great suffering and affliction. Great suffering and affliction. It feels as though we're living through a great time of suffering and affliction, doesn't it? I'm hearing a new phrase in the news now called pandemic fatigue. You look at the numbers, how many millions of people are still unemployed, how many families have been affected by job loss, and you see the reports of how many people have been infected, but uh, beyond that, you see just how many people each day are dying because of COVID-19. A thousand people a day are dying because of COVID-19. And we're seeing this uh, virus surge in every U.S. state practically. And yet we are still here. And we're still worshiping God together. We're still holding on to hope. We're still praying to God to heal our land, to lead us to streams of living water, to wipe away every tear from our eyes. And as I consider the times that we're living through, I think about the suffering and the infliction that my grandparents would have experienced or their parents or, or, or their parents, right? How far back can we go and, and think about all of the affliction, all of the suffering, all of the times that uh, our ancestors, our family was put under pressure? You know, in this country alone, think about American slavery and the Civil War and injustice that was allowed to persist through Jim Crow laws. That was a time of great suffering and affliction and, and the prejudices and the injustices that still persist today continue to afflict our sisters and our brothers. I think about wars that were fought. I think about the, the Holocaust, the atomic bomb. I think about diseases and, and epidemics like the Spanish flu that claim the lives of millions. And, and let's think about natural disasters, right? Tornadoes and earthquakes and hurricanes and floods and fires and all the different ways in which those natural disasters affected our families and, and, and they persist in our stories and in our family history. And yet in the midst of all of that death and destruction and despair and disease, we can see that hope arose for our family members, for those saints, that despite all of the odds being stacked against them, they found a way. They made it. They survived. They thrived. They blazed new trails and they raised their families, which is how you and I are here today, right? They couldn't just uh, Google the answer to a question that they had. When you think about what life was like for them back then, they couldn't just watch a YouTube video how-to tutorial. The internet wasn't just like at their fingertips in their back pocket. The world looked very different a hundred years ago, 50 years ago, even 15, 20 years ago. And still these family members, our loved ones, these saints, they made a way in God's world because of God's grace. They provide an example for us all. And so what are we to do today? Uh, ignore that example as we try to make our way through God's world by God's grace, right? How do we respond to death and despair and disease and destruction? Well, I think we need to look to their example. We need to follow their example. And so when we talk about following the example of the saints, let's for a moment ask ourselves, what do we mean when we say the word saint? When you think of your mother or your father, you think about that kind neighbor who lived next door or a, a relative who was always uh, sweet to you or a teacher or a coach who always guided you, who went out of their way uh, right, to provide for their students or to provide for others. You might make the remark when you think of that person, she was such a saint. Right? So, so what do we mean when we say that people are saints. I think part of it is that they demonstrate sacrificial love, that they put others' needs before their own, that they live in such a way that it makes others uh, want to live better lives themselves. 
they are genuinely good people animated by God's Holy Spirit, right? You feel like there's just like a glow about them, that there's something inside of them that's, that's making them uh, just live this saintly life. But here's the thing. These saints from our families, from, uh, from our neighborhoods, from our schools and workplaces, when you think of these saints, uh, remember this. They're not perfect. They're not angels. They were regular people who lived lives in a saintly manner. So what do I mean by this? Like, why do I mention all of this? Like the fact that they're not perfect. Like we have this really great memory in our mind of who these family members were, how they lived their lives, these saints that have impacted us. So why do I mention that they're not perfect and that they weren't angels? So I mention it because it means there's hope for you and for me to become saints, to be considered saints by those whom we love. Like for one day, for my son, for potential grandchildren, for those whom I see in my life every day, to maybe make that remark, he was such a saint. So I have to ask myself, if I'm loving others with this sacrificial agape love, Right? Have I put others' needs before my own? Do I inspire others to live a better life? Right? These are the questions we should be asking ourselves. Am I following the direction of God's Holy Spirit in my life? Am I living in a saintly manner? And these are all the things to which you and I can aspire to. But then there are some very specific things that we see happening in Revelation 7 that can help guide our actions on this All Saints Day. As we follow the example of the saints, we can look to Revelation 7 and see three specific things. So first, John notices that the crowd of people are worshiping God. They shouted their thanksgivings. They lifted up their amens. They waved palm branches above their heads, and they wore white as a sign of victory. Their rejoicing was reminiscent of the Feast of Tabernacles, or the Feast of Booths, when Israel would give thanks for God's blessing during the 40 years that they spent in the wilderness. So we too must claim victory in Jesus. We are called to follow the saints in rejoicing and giving thanks to God. So may we clothe ourselves in white and wave branches over our heads as we consider all the ways that God has provided for us during times of trouble and tribulation. The next point that should uh, come to the forefront of our minds, the next item that we must consider is the geography of this scene. Christ is not at the front of some cathedral, some long uh, cathedral or chapel hidden behind a chancel or an altar. John states that the multitude stood in a circle around the throne and that Christ lived at the center of their universe, the center of their attention and thought and praise. Christ was at the center of the throne. So, are we following the example of the saints? Does Christ inhabit the center of our universe? Is Christ the focus of our praise, the center of our efforts and our energy and our strivings in life? Think of the saints in your own life, right? The ones whom we remember today, the ones that we celebrate today. How did they treat their faith? And how do they talk about their relationship with God? Because their lives provide a template for how we should live our own lives today. Is Christ at the center of your universe? Lastly, the elder says that the saints have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. This is what made them pure. This blood turned their robe, not, not red, but white. The blood of the Lamb turned their robes white. Some of these saints were martyrs who were willing to follow the Lamb to death. Their praise is continuous 
each breath a prayer, each step along the path that God has prepared for them. So I pray that we will rise up to this way of living, that we will clothe ourselves with the salvation of Christ, living pure and blameless lives, continually praying and worshiping the Lord on high. Because as we look to this passage, there's no concern about food or drink or shelter or comfort because God has provided for God's people. In just a moment, we're going to gather at God's table and we will elevate and rise up to join the heavenly feast. And when we eat the bread and drink the juice, we will join with the saints in praising God, in giving thanks for Jesus' sacrifice. And we will remember, friends, that God provides. As we honor the saints and name those who have joined the church triumphant, may we consider the ways in which those multitudes in heaven worshipped God. How they would look to God's throne at the center of the universe, the center of their lives. And let's consider the ways in which the gift of salvation can make us clean. May we put on those pure white robes that have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Will we claim the salvation that has been purchased for us by Jesus? Will we overcome the world and claim the reward that awaits us in eternity? Will we follow the example of the saints and live saintly lives for this generation and for the next on this All Saints Day? I pray that my answer and your answer will be yes. Yes, I'm ready to follow their example. I'm ready to gather with the saints at the river. I'm ready to live a saintly life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, we are going to transition to the table now. And so I invite you to gather these communion packets that you might have picked up earlier this week. And if not, simply gather bread or crackers along with water, wine, or juice as we go through our All Saints Day liturgy. And so I invite you now to hear these words. Members of the household of faith, we join together virtually, present to one another as we gather our hearts and our minds. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's word, and now in our shared eating. As we go through this liturgy together, the words will be on your screen. My text will be in white, and you'll read the responses that are in yellow. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, I invite you to take this time to now silently confess your sins before God. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven, and we give glory to God for that. Amen. Right now, we invite you to take a moment to pass the peace of Christ this morning. You can do this by saying hello to your friends uh, who have signed on in the chat. You can reply to one of their comments uh, in a thread, or you can simply type the word peace. Type the word peace into the chat uh, as we put a title card on the screen 
for the next 30 seconds. And when we return, we will hear the words of the great Thanksgiving. So would you now pass the peace of Christ, the peace of Christ be with you always. And we'll see you back here in 30 seconds. Thank you for saying hello to friends, and as always, reach out to us this week if we can be of any help or support to you. Let us now continue with the words of the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations, and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave the cup to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here virtually and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you now. Jim Graves. Charles Owen. Don Downing, Jenny Anderson, Betty Hilbin, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us, God, to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. We who come from every nation and tribe and language are one body. Because we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. So I invite you to take the bread that you have in front of you or the wafer that is sealed in this communion packet. And as we hold it in our hands together, let us give thanks to God. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Let us now share together in the bread. Amen. The cup which we give thanks over is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And so I invite you to take your water, wine, or juice, or you can take the communion cup that we provided for you. And as we open it, we give thanks to God for the cup of salvation. So let us now share together in receiving the cup. Amen. Friends, let us join our voices together with this prayer. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, friends, our time at the table is going to close out our worship service today. We hope that this has been meaningful for you and for your loved ones as we have honored the saints, remembered our loved ones who are no longer with us but are now with the Lamb in heaven. If you found our worship service today and you'd like to learn more about Peace Tree and what it means to follow Jesus, then please message us over Facebook. You can email me directly. You can also fill out our digital connect card at peacetree.church slash connect. We are here for you. We are ready to pray with you and we want to support you in your faith walk. Remember to check in on your family and your neighbors. Uh, Look, friends, if there's any way that we can support you or any way that we can pray with you this week, then type the word prayer in the chat. You can also email prayer requests to prayer at peacetree.church. As always, remember to like and share this video. Subscribe to our channel. God bless you, friends. We will see you back here next week for the start of our newest series, Spiritual. Take care and God bless.